If you run a remote team, would you let your team work from anywhere? And I mean anywhere. I'm going to be reacting to an article from Business Insider. Apparently, workers are taking elaborate steps to move overseas and actually work from literally anywhere, which I think is a little bit different to what people were expecting when they created the remote revolution. Now, COVID happened. Everyone started getting stuck at home and having to work remotely, but now people have come back to the office. I think people are taking this remote working thing to a little bit of extremes. And what I love about this is this is like an employee revolt. It's employees doing whatever the hell they want. And so I want to read this article. I'm going to react to it. I'm going to share what my thoughts are on remote work. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Pete Moriarty. I'm founder of a company called IT Genius. We help businesses systemize, organize, and scale using Google Workspace. And we were actually running a remote team for six years prior to COVID happening. We had everyone working from home. We still have everyone working at home. And some of our team travel, some work from co-working spaces. I spend most of my time working from home. I've got my studio here, but I also spend plenty of time on the road as well. And so we're very interested in remote work and how technology can actually enable enable remote work as well. Now, I saw this article and I thought it was pretty interesting because I stumbled a couple of months ago across a Reddit subreddit called Overwork, which is a culture and community of people taking on multiple jobs and actually working multiple remote jobs at the same time. And then just, you know, basically, you know, shipping it in, phoning it in, doing the absolute minimum at each one of those jobs to keep their job, but banking multiple paychecks. And so I think that's a discussion for another video, but I've always been interested in once a company has opened up for remote work, what then happens to the employees? You know, do you have people who will literally strap on a backpack and go and disappear? Well, probably not because most people probably have families and responsibilities in their in their place of business. But I love the premise of this article that people are not telling their boss that they're moving to a different place. And I do actually have friends that have done this. I've got friends that work for other companies who are a remote worker and they've come on holidays with me. I'm an entrepreneur and so I've got the ability to go wherever I want, whenever I want, but they don't when they're working for someone else. But I've had them come on holidays and hang with me when they're supposed to be working from a particular place and you know they just log in and do their meetings from a hotel room and no one is any the wiser. So let's jump into this article. Some workers are moving to another country. They're, they're taking elaborate measures to conceal their locations and one worker who's moving to Mexico has told them it is worth the risk. Now, I mean, I'm really curious about this. You know, Would you actually pick up your family and move them if you had a family? I'm gonna assume that these are young people who don't have that many you know, fixations, but one of the things I love about remote work is it literally allows you to work from anywhere. And so it means that you get to choose to live from anywhere. Now, about six years ago, when I got my business to the stage of being completely, completely remote, I was able to choose where do I want to live? If I could live absolutely anywhere in the world, where would I like to live and run my business from? I happened to choose the Gold Coast in Australia, which I think is one of the best places in the world, but it opened up and gave me this amazing opportunity to be anywhere that I wanted to be. So let's have a look at what some of this article is saying. People are saying that they're moving to Europe. I assume this is uh, people who are based in the US and someone bought a plane to ticket as proof they were returning to the US from Europe, but it sounds like they canceled the flight immediately after that happened. <laughs> That's a pretty good trip. So in order to justify someone's ability to come into in-person work events, they're telling co-workers they'd moved to a different state. So still within the same country, but they're saying they moved to a different state. And then they created a VPN and a router system to conceal their computer's location. So I guess that's that's gonna come down to it. If you're working for a large enough company and they have some kind of control over your computers, or maybe perhaps you're even working for a small business, but they have some way of seeing what IP address you're using to connect to your work applications, your location could be revealed by the IP address of where you are. Because IP addresses are typically locked down a link to certain countries. And so most applications can pick up an IP address that you're accessing the app from and then do a backwards reverse lookup on that IP address and work out where it's come from. If you use something like a VPN, then you can pretend that you're in a different country. So you might pretend that you're in the US. And most people use VPNs to like access the US version of Netflix when they're abroad. But I guess this could also be used if you want to conceal where you're working from. 
I used to use it when I traveled to China and Google's tools still don't work very well in China. And I was wanting to use my Google Drive and my Gmail and the rest of my Google Workspace ecosystem. And I've got another video on the channel about using VPNs in China specifically for Google Workspace. Moving abroad is an extreme example of employees defying orders to return to the office. Corporations are struggling to bring workers back to their cubicles and meeting rooms in the name of collaboration and company culture. Now, this is an interesting one for me because we've worked very, very hard on our company culture, and we've worked very, very hard to build a collaborative team as well. We're literally in the business of selling collaboration software when we sell Google Workspace. And so how does this actually work for businesses? If you have a remote team, how does collaboration actually work? It is just absolutely impossible to deny that more collaboration spontaneously will happen when people are in an office with each other because you're literally sitting across the desk from someone, you've got someone to chit chat to about your work or maybe you're sitting in the office and you overhear someone on the phone having a phone conversation with a customer and that may spark a conversation, right? You may be able to say to someone, hey, let's jump into this meeting room here for three minutes and just discuss this topic and then let's get back to our work and you can kind of see who's busy and who's not busy amongst your colleagues. Whereas when you're working remotely, meetings tend to be scheduled, meetings tend to have a purpose. You don't have the water cooler chat. You don't have the walk down to the cafe together to grab a coffee or step outside to have a smoke or something like that where those kind of spontaneous work conversations will tend to happen. And so I can understand that big corporates want to bring people back into an office right now to have that natural, spontaneous collaboration happening. The other really healthy thing about going to an office or going to a workplace that's separate to working from home is that you have a nice separation between your home and your family life and your work life. And what that means is that your, your partnerships are gonna be healthier because distance makes the heart grow fonder. But you know, having that distance and having that space means that you're not gonna feel you know, the, the enmeshment and the claustrophobia of being at home all the time and being in the bubble of your home slash workspace if they become a consolidated space or a consolidated energy. So I understand that companies wanna have people coming back to an office because it's gonna help the business, but it's also gonna help people overall. There are benefits health-wise overall. So why do I still run a completely remote company? Why do I have a business that has people spread all over the world in different locations, all working from home primarily? Well, for me, what's most important is that I give people the choice to work the way that they want to work. Now, most of our team happens to be residing in the Philippines and in the Philippines, transport is ridiculously difficult. Also, the big challenge with uh, the Philippines is that talent is spread out all over the country. There's 110 million people in the Philippines. And if we were to set up a work location in one particular city, we would have to say to people, okay, get into a jeepney or other form of transportation and sit in traffic for half an hour or an hour or potentially even longer each way to the office and back just to be able to get to work, which is not great for someone's health because they're open in the outside fumes and also it takes away from more family time. So my personal preference based on the circumstances of the country that we primarily employ our team in is that we go for 100% at home. So how do we mitigate and how do we you know, clean up the challenges of people not working together, actually working in different locations. Well, some of the most important things that we do are to organize team meetups. So that looks like team dinners in different cities. It looks like at least once a year, flying everyone into one place and having a big company catch up where we all you know, you know, know, hang out together and we drink and we have food and we you know, sing KTV together. And that actually brings the business together and allows people to build those social and personal relationships that would be harder to build working completely remotely. But it also allows us to work on the business as well with those spontaneous conversations, those spontaneous collaborative conversations inside the business. So my personal opinion is let people do what they want. As long as people are productive, as long as they're hitting their KPIs, as long as they're getting their work done, I want to give people the choice to do what they like and work however they want to work. But that's not the way for every big corporate in the world. And that's why people are having to dodge the rules with this. Another employee told Fortune that her manager is aware she's been working virtually from Bali, but has requested her to not tell her co-workers to avoid potential backlash. She uses a fake Zoom background and takes phone calls in a soundproof booth to conceal any noise that could give away her location. And that's an interesting one. You know, like I'm the founder of the business, so I have the privilege of being able to work from wherever I wanna work. And sometimes that's literally on the beach on a deck chair because, you know, some of my meetings are pretty chill and I can do them from there. But I'm curious, like, you know, what do you think about that? Do you think you should, you know, stop your team from working from an exotic holiday location 
if they are still able to turn in their work. I guess, you know, there's probably risks that the company would be worried about. The risks that the company would be worried about would be if you're out there and you're, you know, having too many mojitos on the beach, then you're probably not going to be productive with your work. Or if there is a culture that you're surrounded by of digital nomadism, which is a little bit more laid back than people clocking in a nine to five in a standard corporate job, then maybe their concern would be that you're not going to be putting as much focus on their business as possible. And I'm curious if you're an employee, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this video. And if you are an employer, I'd also love to know what your thoughts are as well. You know, how do we find a way of having our team working productively, but also, you know, ideally giving them the freedom to work where they wanna work. If you've opened up a role to being remote, someone can technically work from wherever they want to work. Should you conceal that amongst the other team members? Should you stop someone working from the beach if they actually wanted to work from the beach every day? All right, so a 23-year-old marketing professional based in the UK told Insider they're in the process of applying for residence visa in Mexico, plan to move for at least a year without their permission of the employer, and they are going to remain anonymous in order to not expose his ruse. They're moving there from Britain and British citizens, can they work there or not? No, you cannot not work there without a visa. All right, cool. A recent survey of workers found that 40% of HR executives discovered employees working from outside their home state or country in the past year. 40%, that's crazy. 28% of employees surveyed said they have worked outside their home state or country since the beginning of COVID, but only a third reported those days to HR. Isn't that interesting? I have a friend who moved up here to the Gold Coast and when she was considering moving here, she would make reconnaissance missions. So she'd come up for a couple of days or a week at a time and she would be basically working from here, still reporting into the business, which happened to be down in Melbourne. Now, the interesting thing was that, and I don't want to expose her identity, but she had a role where from time to time, she would be called into site. She would have to visit a client site. And a couple of times that happened when she was up here on the Gold Coast and she had to say to them, oh, sorry, I'm not quite feeling 100% today. I, I, I can't go and inspect that project. <laughs> and so I think that's pretty fascinating for someone who actually has responsibilities in a particular city to be disappearing somewhere completely remotely. Many companies have allowed employees to work remotely full-time. However, most do not permit working across international borders because of the regulatory risks spanning tax insurance and immigration law it can also create compensation concerns because people's cost of living is changing. And that's the thing that I hope this article was gonna to come to. Uh, that is absolutely the reality. We pay insurance for our business, but technically it doesn't cover somebody working from a country that we have not declared that we are doing business from. And so I don't know what the situation would be when someone is on holiday. People do sometimes work for our business when they are on holiday. They'll sometimes check in with the team even when they are on leave. However, for someone living in another country, we should technically be reporting that to our insurance company to let them know that we have people working from a different location. And so that would be a vote on the business side of not allowing people to willy-nilly go all around the world and work from wherever they want to work because literally the business may be uninsured and that puts everybody involved in the business at risk. Even Airbnb, which was applauded for its work from anywhere announcement, allowing people to work temporarily in over 170 countries for up to 90 days a year, don't yet have the infrastructure to support full-time international moves. And it's interesting that they note this, that, but this infrastructure is actually being built out. And so there is a company called Deal. There are many other companies as well that are starting to do international payroll and international entities. And how these work is basically you pay them a set fee for your payroll and they take a very small margin and from there, they then set up the entities in different countries and they do insurance. They do, I don't know about any of the HR, but I, know, I do know they do the compliance in the local countries. And then with that app and with that system, you can also pay your team as well. So they do some of the currency payments and it effectively helps you to build out an international team. So that might make some of the regulatory and some of the financial hurdles a little bit easier. So I'd love to know your thoughts. If you're an employee, where do you think the most productive work is that you do? Do you think it should be hybrid? Do you think you should be working between a home location and a location with other humans from your business. Personally, I love the idea of work hubs. Work hubs are places that you can go to and actually get work done, but the people that you're sitting next to aren't necessarily your colleagues. I guess, you know, you're still missing the collaboration with your colleagues inside your company right now. If you're an employer, if you're someone who's employing people, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, what's your policy inside your company? What are the reasons that you've chosen that policy? I'd be curious to know from you. This is a very 
very important conversation to be had right now as we integrate in a post-pandemic world the new way of working. Now, we've been talking about this for a very long time. A decade ago, we were talking about the concept of work hubs. We had our team all working from home all at the same time. We already had a distributed company because we followed other businesses like Buffer and Basecamp who were already doing this for many years prior. But the COVID pandemic basically accelerated everybody else into this new reality. And I'd love to know from you what you think about this and how you're managing this in your company right now. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. If you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.